Hey friends, Emma here. It's Tuesday, September 20th. Welcome to the Missions Changed My Life show by Global Hope India with your host, Kevin White. This is the podcast where we say yes to God's call to finish the task of the Great Commission. Thank you for subscribing, reviewing, and sharing the show. Kevin is a best-selling author, international speaker, and serial entrepreneur. He has helped start hundreds of churches, businesses, and nonprofits throughout the world. Now as CEO of Spirit Media, Kevin is reinventing the publishing industry by connecting publishing and branding, starting marketing before publishing, and publishing in every format, everywhere, to all nations. If you need help writing, editing, publishing, marketing your book, or building your brand, get help from Kevin and his team at spiritmedia.us. That's spiritmedia.us. Okay, now here's your host, Kevin White. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Missions Change My Life with Global Hope India. I am your host, Pastor Kevin White, and I am so thankful. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm waving at you right now. If you're listening wherever podcasts can be heard, welcome to Missions Change My Life. It is Tuesday, September the 20th, 2022, and I'm so grateful to have you in the audience. Recently, one of my newest friends, Melvin Pillay, was in Raleigh, and he shared a powerful message on the power of believing. And I want to share this message with you. I think it has a global impact and just finishing the task of the Great Commission. And I, I hope that you will give this your utmost attention as Melvin Pillay, a platinum speaker in the Zig Ziglar organization, shares with us. He is from South Africa. He is a leader to world leaders. And I'm blessed for him to speak this message into my life. And I hope that you will receive it. This is part one of a three-part series, The Power of Believing. Let's put our hands together and welcome Brother Melvin to the show. Wonderful. Thank you, Wow. Who can give a fabulous job? Who can give a round of applause? Wow. My God. It feels like I'm in church right now. <laughs> wow, what a wonderful thing. You know, I've been walking down the street in Texas one day, and the elderly couple got into their car. It was obviously the lady's car. And I saw the back of the bumper sticker, and the bumper sticker read, Some morning I wake up jumping. And on other mornings, I let them sleep in. <laughs> now, I don't know how you wake up in the morning, but jumping is certainly not the way. Somebody once told me that the joy of the Lord is our strength. You see, there is strength in joy. Now, here, this is happiness is a state of mind. But joy is the state of the kingdom of God in you. So, I told you to compare it to my one minute of laughter strengthens the body's immune system for eight hours. And one minute of anger reduces the body's immune system by 24 hours. And so he goes on and says that the joy of the Lord is truly your strength. So there's something about having joy in your heart that's absolutely contagious. I teach a lot on sales and public speaking. And so one of the things I say to people in sales and business is 80% of sales, 80% of everything in business is likability. If people like you, they will listen to you. If they listen to you, they will trust you. If they trust you, they'll buy from you. My friend, there's no better way to get people to like you than to be a person filled with joy. A joy is that enthusiasm inside of you. Enthusiasm is a Greek word that means it's your routine. God lives again. What the world needs now, as the song goes, is what? Love, sweet love. Enthusiasm means God lives again. That's what we need right now. If you run your business, don't be afraid of using the word love. The greatest thing you ever do in life is to love. So, I'm from Texas, actually. I mean, I look it, but I'm actually from Texas. Now, the thing I learned about Texas is this. When you drive in Texas, you always going to look behind you. Because 
The ranger is behind you, all right? Now you take this guy, this famous ranger, and he's released hot flowers. Now we learn in the Texas, we have a single thing that definitely cost us this. In Texas, they tell you, Chuck Norris is so bad, he makes money in his car. <laughs> Chuck Norris is threatening you when they call the song. He said that one day Chuck Norris kicked up horse in the gym, his descendants are now known as drugs. Now I don't know if Mr. Norris can or can't do that, but it suddenly paints a picture in your mind, doesn't it? My friend, success is all about painting the right picture in your mind and picture in those that are around you. The world is looking for a picture of hope. And there's no better hope than you can give the world than the hope that's in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to talk a lot today about life and success. I'm going to talk first. If you promise to listen very, very intently, okay? In communication, it's so easy to be misunderstood. It's like when I hear the story of, an, of a lady and her three sons. Well, they were very poor. As the boys grew up, they left home and went into the big wide world and became very successful. On the 92nd birthday of mom, the boys come home. And that evening, the brothers are bragging about the gifts they bought to mom. The first time the boy goes, I bought mom a Mercedes Benz and driver. The second brother goes, oh, that's nothing. I bought mom a house value a million dollars. The third boy goes, oh, that's nothing. He says, you know how mom loves to read the Bible, but her eyes are so bad, she can't read. Well, I bought mom a parrot that could recite the Bible. <laughs> it's taken cow box to train this bird on how to recite the Bible to be thirty to hundred thousand dollars a year. Well, the boys go home. About a week later, mom decides to write them each a letter. For the first time, Malcolm, she says, Malcolm, the car you bought me is useless. I don't go out shopping much, and your driver is very rude. For the second time, Milton, she says, Milton, the house you bought me is of no use. I live in only one room, but I'm going to clean the entire house. <laughs> For the third time, Max says, she wants to come to me. Dear Maxwell, I'm so proud from all of my children, you're the only one who probably said the chicken was delicious. <laughs> now, to do animal lovers, no bird will harm to make that joke. We have a communication problem in life, you know? We just absolutely misunderstand people. We think we know what people want, but we do not know what they want. Let me tell you what people want. Around the world, billionaires, millionaires, the people who have a cent in their pocket, they all want respect. If you can learn how to respect people, only then will they allow you to love them. Respect. He sees love. That's what Jesus before. He showed them love. He showed them respect. If you respect clients, if you respect people, they'll be open to listen to whatever message you have in your heart. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Let the message of love flow out of you. But it only works when you respect people. Understand people, and you will find that life is actually very easy and right. Well, I was actually born in South Africa under the apartheid regime. We were born in poverty. We lived in two sharp nails together with sheet metal. We were so poor we had only two makeshift beds. Mom and dad slept in one bed, six children on the other. I joke with people who we were so poor we used to go to KFC and lick other people's fingers. <laughs> First job interview, I traveled my great arm, not the bus, the dog. <laughs> but seriously, man, life was very difficult to pass in South Africa. We literally, truly lived in a tin shack. So I tell to people, anyone can stop or nothing. 
It doesn't matter where you thought. It doesn't matter what you didn't have. It only matters what you believe and picture you paint in your mind. Thanks to God, we had a mother who was a believer. She believed in the power of prayer. So when we were little children, she would tell us stories about this great God that the missionary told us about. This great God called Jesus, who lived in America. <laughs> <laughs> she would tell us, they told me if we needed anything, Jesus would provide if we learned how to pray. So I came on mom at night saying, Jesus, I've got no food for my children. Can you please give us food? The next morning, she light a fire outside, she would put up water on the stove, and she'd go for a walk. An hour or two later, she'd come back with a chicken in this hand, vegetables in this hand. I said, Mom, where are you getting the food from? She said, My son, the Lord provides. Don't ever forget the person that built the foundation that you are standing on right now. Nobody makes it to the top by themselves. Every single person in this room, somebody took the time to think about you. Somebody took time to pray for you. Somebody spoke life into your destiny. So for me, it was my mom. My precious friend, I can almost assure you right now that you are doing something for somebody like this very moment. As you build other people's platform, your success in life will go higher and higher. And higher. That's how this thing works. So we lived in poverty, and one day an incident happened in my life that completely changed the trajectory of my life. My dad and I went for a walk to the local supermarket to buy the groceries. So he came back, and on our way back home, a group of men encountered us, and they Looked at me, I had torn clothing on, with no shoes on my feet, and they sat at me, they laughed at me. And my dad was really angry, we really upset, but he couldn't do anything with a large group of them. And these, as my father turned away, I saw the look on his face of absolute defeat, that he could do nothing for his little boy. And I said to myself, I will never live in poverty. Something happens to you when you say to yourself, enough! No more! I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to live in this, in this excuse anymore. I'm tired of this comfort zone. At age seven, I made the decision saying to myself, bubble. Well, I saw airplane fly away. And as the airplane took off into the heaven, I started to chase after it. As it drifted away, I looked at that airplane and said to the airplane, one day, I am going to fly in you, and I'm never going to stop flying. Well, guess what? Decades later, the dream came absolutely true. Precious friend, something happened when you believe in yourself. The number one problem God has with his children is what? Unbelief. I joke with Paul, as I said to him, listen, they know that the disciples had not believed a single thing that Jesus said. They said, what do you mean? I said, well, absolutely, they didn't believe him. He said, oh, come on now, what do you mean? I said, listen, did Jesus say that he was going to die? Oh, yes. Did Jesus say he was going to be resurrected three days later? They said, yes. He said, how many disciples turned up at the Two day three with fish and bread. Now, one day he came with oil for his body. So the bottom line is this people just don't believe God. They don't believe how great a person lives inside of him. If you could but only believe in yourself, believe in the gifts that he's given you, believe and not doubt, you can achieve anything that life has for you. There's something about you. Believing in yourself that changes the entire trajectory of your life. I have found this in working with people. People generally have six bad jokes about money and success, five excuses about themselves, and one comfort zone of fear, familiarity, 
of faith. Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. The problem says that as a man thinks, so shall you be. How you think is how you feel. How you feel is how you speak. How you speak is how you perform. Your performance are your behaviors. Your behaviors become your habits. Your habits become your destiny and your life. It all starts with how you think. And the seven-year-old little boy, I thought that one day I'm going to travel the world and speak to audiences all around the world. And guess what? I had no clue on how it was going to happen. And I thank God for that. If I knew how challenging it was going to be, I would have stayed there in my level place. It's okay not to know where you're going, as long as you know the one who's going with you. Thank you so much, uh, Melvin, for sharing that word of God. This happens to be part one of a three-part series, and I hope you'll come back next week for Missions Change My Life. God bless you all. Three billion people still have limited to no access to know about Jesus. Three billion people is a lot of people. A human chain of three billion people could extend to the moon and back three and a half times. One of those billion calls India home. That's one billion people who are facing death without knowing Jesus. Global Hope India has been empowering Christian churches throughout India as they provide access for all people to know about Jesus. Learn more at globalhopeindia.org. That's globalhopeindia.org. Thank you for listening to the Missions Changed My Life show by Global Hope India with Kevin White. Don't forget to visit spiritmedia.us for help in writing, editing, publishing, marketing your book, or building your brand. Visit spiritmedia.us today. Visit kevinwhite.us and join thousands of subscribers to Kevin's free daily one-minute motivation series called Generously Blessed. Kevin's books, Audacious Generosity and Get to the Point, are available in hardback, paperback, ebook, and audiobook at kevinwhite.us, worldwide on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and everywhere books are sold. Your five-star review on Amazon will be greatly appreciated. This has been Missions Changed My Life with Kevin White. Find the complete archive of all episodes at kevinwhite.us or subscribe for free through your favorite podcast player and never miss an episode. This program copyright Global Hope India, all rights reserved. Each week, we bring you a message of how God uses missions to bring real and lasting change through Jesus Christ. Join Global Hope India again next week for Missions Changed My Life with Kevin White.